79B. It's time to look at your week nine materials. We've got some great stuff going on this week. I know it's been a little wild and wooly lately. Um, hopefully we got everything hammered out on peer review. If not, please let me know and I will address that as soon as I can. This is what you're looking at right now. Um, you're an instructor view, but that's okay. I don't like student view very much. So got a lot of really exciting stuff coming up this week. We'll be looking at Raymond Chandler, um, one of the fathers of Siri Noir or modern detective fiction. And if you wanted to, you could maybe go all the way back to Poe, but it's not the same thing at all as far, as far as tone and dialogue and characterization, whole different thing. And it, you know, bleeds into film noir and I'll be talking about that in the video lectures. We will also be looking at the Harlem Renaissance jumping over to the other side of the continent um, and there we will look specifically at Claude McKay, Zora Neale Hurston um, for this week and that's more than enough because we're talking about some really big shifts in material here. I mean the modern age is really shifting culture at a rapid rate through mass media. All right so looking at Wednesday you've got Raymond Chandler's Red Wind, click here. That link looks dead. I will have to try to make, I'm not going to do this in front of you, but I'm going to highlight that so I know to come back. Yeah, we'll see if that works. Okay. Um, I will also give you an introduction on quiz two. Hard to believe it's coming up already, uh, but it is. But I'm more than happy to talk to any of you about it. Um, Hit me up, come to my advice hours, remind, inbox. Uh, I'll make a time for you. Now, coming up uh, for the 11th, this Saturday, that's when we're going to be looking at Claude McKay. Um, and here's your bio information, and then the, these poems. Not that much. Um, but I think you'll notice his very classicist structure as far as poetry goes. I want to talk about it already. All right. And then Zora Neale Hurston, um, the author who really uh, had a powerful influence on people like Alice Walker um, and also uh, Maya Angelou. Anyway, she's an early female African American writer and Sweat the Eaton, from the Eaton Anthology and the Eaton Anthology are both really strong examples of regionalist fiction and African-American fiction. Read them out loud. They're going to be written in dialect. So it's going to look on the page the way it sounds. So reading it out loud will help you get towards that meeting at, meaning as it goes through, uh, goes through your mouth and through your ears. Also be talking a little bit about essay number two. And I'm, I'm giving you a little preview here of what's going to happen in our week 10 discussion. And this, this coming up Sunday, I'm, I'm asking you to turn in essay one. Uh, people are looking good in general as far as their drafts go. I've really enjoyed looking at the peer reviews as well. Um, I'm going to keep on streamlining that. So if you've got any you know advice for me to make that work better, please let me know. So that's about all I got to say about that. Going now, here are our video lectures, Raymond Chandler, oh, and all this stuff about noir and movies and stuff. Um, some more information. Uh, that'll be fun. All right, the Twitter recommendation comes from the Tiresias thread we were on. Then Harlem Renaissance. Oh, then also Langston Hughes. Um, and quiz two, Langston Hughes will not be coming up until week 10. Um, maybe I'll have to move that lecture or repost it for you. Here's your text for Red Wind by Random Raymond Chandler. If you really wanted to do these in order, it'd be better for you to do it like this by the time you see it on yours, uh, on your uh, screen, it'll already be there, but not in this video. Uh, looking at week nine discussion coming up, we'll be looking at T.S. Eliot Rank Chandler for it. Um, Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, I'm going to ask you to think about that and, you know, really modern themes of loneliness, hesitation, vagueness, uh, lack of closure. 
the wasteland. You've got this poem that goes over everything, practically everything badly. It's kind of like the dark side or Sith Lord version of um, of Leaves of Grass. The song of myself specifically. Actually, I think Howl might be better. Well, I'll let you guys decide when we get to Howl in a little while. Um, what did you think about all the allusions to other references uh, in culture and literature? That's what that one's all about. Finally, Raymond Chandler. I'm going to ask you to think about um, the nature of its style. In other words, its word choice, its tone. Um, its characterization, its plot, um, and other, other elements of it, including setting. Um, bum, bum, bum. We got all that taken care of. Moving down here, you'll notice everything you know what to do already. Coming up, you've also got tutor verification. All you got to do is submit. If you need to put something in the text box as well, please do that. Um, I really want to make sure everybody sees a tutor either on person or through smart thinking or through our tutor center. If you've got more questions about that, please let me know. And then you've got a reflection. Now, if we want to get better at something, we got to stand back from our performance a bit and give ourselves a gut check. Where did we do it really well? Where do we still need to improve? And that's what this reflection is for. So I'm going to ask you to copy and paste your thesis into the first and last paragraphs. Um, I really want you to do all of this before you submit your uh, essay, just because you don't want to do it on uh, off memory. And maybe you're even going to make some changes based on this. I'm going to ask you to pretend that the this essay will rock the lit crit world. In other words, it's mind-blowing. I want you to brag about it. Then I want you to imagine the opposite. Get yourself into the state of mind where you can kind of exaggerate its strengths um, and its areas of improvement. Finally, I'm going to ask you to assess the work you put into the essay. Give yourself a score of 1 to 10. Predict the grade you've earned. And then quickly name the classmate and the tutor that you worked with. Easy peasy. Again, if you've got questions on that, let me know. And coming all the way back here, final draft submission. Okay. How many of you guys have used Turnitin before? Raise your hand. Okay, so that's quite a few of you. So if you haven't made it before, all you need to do is come to this page. Click on the gray box. It'll take you to turn it in. Look, all of my stuff is ready to go because I've got it already set up. If you're a new user, you're just going to have to click right in there. And then you're going to hit student, etc. and so on. It's pretty straightforward. But if you've got any problems at all with it, let me know. So once you get in, it's going to take a while because it's turn it in you'll notice English 75B. Click on that, and you can just submit your paper right there. So, 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 I was gonna tell you one more thing about that. Oh, here's the class ID that you'll need to put in to get access to the course, and the enrollment key, 26355. That's also our section number. Not a coincidence. I try to make it easy for you. Anyway, that's all we have going on for this week, but that feels like more than enough before we head off into spring break. Um, I will be around. I will be electronically connected. So if you need to talk to me or get a heads up to me about some of your work or anything, don't hesitate to reach out. Canvas Inbox works really well, and so does Remind. If you don't have Remind count, I really suggest you make one as soon as you can. Thanks a lot, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon.